Okay, so in our first time interval, our delta, in the first time interval, our delta theta was negative point zero 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 one. Didn't really leave myself room to write that down, so let's kind of make a column here because that's a little bit of a long number. And alpha was approximately negative 120. And delta omega then uh, was approximately negative 0.12. Our new omega, we took our omega, we added our change in omega, and we got negative 0.22. Our theta, take our theta and add our new theta, and we get 1.1999. Again, forgive my 11.9999 um, wasn't thinking. Then we do what? Well, we bring these two values over here. Our new omega can go here. Our new theta can go here. So we got 1.1999, and we got negative 0.22 here. Our delta theta, we calculated. And remember the reasons why we're calculating these. Don't just get into blind calculations, at least not for the first several steps when you're writing something down. Always be thinking about why you're calculating what you are. But, you know, pay attention to the scheme of the calculation as well. Or do the scheme of the calculation, then go back and think about it. You have to think about it to know how to start it. Once you've done that, maybe you can follow the calculation scheme, get the numbers, then go back and think about them and see if they make sense. Okay, well, delta theta, in this case, then, would have been negative 0 0.00012, um, 0 0.00022. Alpha would still be pretty close to negative 120. And remember, that 120 is just my ballpark estimate. Put it in your calculator uh, and eventually let Excel do it. Okay, our delta omega would have been negative 0.22. Sorry, negative 0.12. Talk about thinking about what you're doing. It's been a long day. Okay, negative 0.12. Then we add our change in theta to our theta, and we get something that rounds off at least to 1.1997. And our new and now that's our new theta, not our new omega. It's going to be a little damp here for a minute. Um, so this would be 1.1997, and our new omega would be negative 0.34. What do we do? We bring these numbers down here. We got 1.1997 and negative 0.34. And now we can calculate our delta theta based on our omega. Based on our theta, we can calculate our alpha, which isn't going to have changed very much. <coughs> and then based on our alpha, and our delta t, we get our delta omega, and then we add our delta omega to our omega and our delta theta to theta, and we get our new values of omega and theta, and we just continue this, and within 200 steps, I think you're going to find that it works. Now, you're not going to carry out 200 steps. That's why I'm showing you how to do this with Excel. But the problem people are having is uh, they don't understand the calculation scheme or how to get the calculation scheme well enough to be able to focus on just how to put it into Excel, okay? Uh, and I'll tell you on the final, um, if you can do the calculation scheme, I'm not going to worry too much if you can't put it in Excel. If you can do the calculation scheme, I'll help you to put it in Excel. Excel's not the purpose of the course. It's just a tool for doing 
heavy duty calculations that nobody in their right mind would want to do by hand. Okay? So focus on understanding why delta theta is what it is, why delta omega is what it is, how we get alpha, and how we put this all together one step at a time.